BFS. But what is this BFS thing? BFS, or better known as breadth-first search, is one of the very first few pathfinding algorithms you may learn when starting a computer science degree or maybe engineering. Now, BFS may have been introduced in this manner as a tree, where you start at the top and then end somewhere at the bottom. Finding the fastest path, which in this tree, is pretty simple. We just go left once, then right once, and there we go. We've traveled a total of two nodes. But what happens if I reorganize the tree to look a little bit different? The paths are the same, but it just looks a bit different. Now what happens if we add a few more nodes and a few more paths? Well, the answer may still be a bit obvious since we can visually see there's only two answers here. Sorry, only one answer. But now what happens if I add a few more paths? The answer may not seem obvious immediately, but we can see there's actually two solutions here, where we travel or traverse three times from the start to reach the end node. But how does a BFS actually work in this situation? What does BFS actually do? That's kind of the question. Well, let's go somewhere where it's a little easier to understand. We'll go back to the original tree that we took a look at. We would first need to initialize a queue and then put our start node 1 in it. Now we have a queue of 1. We'll mark node 1 as visited as red. Now we'll dequeue 1, which is the first node in the queue, or the first in the queue. But we see that it has two neighbors, 2 and 3. So let's mark those as visited and then queue them into the queue. Now our queue has 2 and 3. Now what we'll do is dequeue node 2 and take a look at those, that node's neighbors, which are 4 and 5. So we mark those as visited as well and enqueue those into our queue. Now at this point, you may have noticed that we just added 5 into our queue, which in this case is our end goal for the queue. As soon as we dequeue 5, that's when the algorithm knows that that's our target and we're done. So the path for this uh, BFS is 1 to 2 to 5. Now this may be all amazing and dandy, but let's actually take a look at how we can apply this in code. All right, so to start our function, we need to first initialize a few things. Obviously here, we'll start our function by saying func BFS, and then all the variables inside, which is just a start and a end goal. Now, this is going to be using a vector2 or a vector2i, and we're going to return an array in the end. Now we're going to keep track of our queue by saying variable q. We're going to keep a variable listed or visited and variable parent. We're going to now append the start node into our queue. And then we're going to keep track of the visited by saying uh, the visited start is equal to true. So that's the very first node or node one, if you recall our tree. Now what we'll do is go into the main loop of our actual function. Now here we just have one or two loops, but it's one main loop outside. First, what we're going to do is we're going to see if the queue size is bigger than zero. And the reason we're able to do this immediately is because right before this, we added something to our queue, right? The very first node, if you recall. Now what we're going to do is essentially pop or dequeue, if you remember, we dequeue the very first node or the very first uh, number inside of our array. And we're going to check if that current is the goal, like meaning it's the end goal. Now, if it is, this is kind of for a little later, and we'll revisit this line, but we're going to reconstruct the path using uh, this helper function, essentially. And we'll take a look at that inside of Godot. But let's take a look at the next part, which is a little more important. It's the chunkier part. Now, for every iteration that we look at one node, we're going to look at each neighbor. So if you remember, we would go from one node, but then look at its neighbors. Now, how do we do that? Well, we need to for loop through its neighbors. We use another helper function called get neighbors, which is not built in Godot. We have to make this ourselves. It's totally fine. We'll look through that as well in Godot. We're going to for loop through the neighbors. And if we have not visited this neighbor, then what we're going to do is we're going to check off visited neighbor is equal to true. And we're going to make the parent of the neighbor also equal to true. And we're going to append the neighbor into our queue that we created before this while loop. And essentially, this is it. This is actually our entire function. Because what happens is eventually it'll uh, traverse through the entire tree or graph or grid, as you may call it. And eventually it will find the goal. It will find the if current is equal to goal. Now, obviously, this won't work in some cases. And we'll go through that inside of Godot in a minute. And I'll show you some examples. Uh, but yeah, this is basically it. And what happens in the very end is it will return nothing or it will return the array 
if it doesn't work. All right, let's take a look inside of Godot now because we've been going all through this amazing gibberish stuff and that's great, but let's take a look at how we can actually implement this and what it might look like. When I hit play here, I'm going to construct this grid that's just grayed out and you can see that there are a few paths and I can just left click and it'll create a path for me. So it is now a pathfinding uh, grid. Now, if you think about this in a way of a tree, it might make a bit more sense, but essentially each uh, grid has up to four neighbors instead of two. So some might only have two. So if we look at this guy right here, this only has two neighbors right here and right here. Now, technically, uh, if you think about it uh, a little bit from our prior example, this, this grid right here might have four neighbors, but two of those neighbors, it just doesn't have a path to. It's not able to walk to that path, right? There is just no connecting uh, path between these two grids. All right, if I right click here, you can, we can remake one and let's see if I can find one. Okay, perfect. So right here, if I left click here and I go over here, you can see that no path is found. Now that goes back to our original function where, here, let's go into our script now. Seems I gotta pop this up, here we go. Here's our script. So this is what happens if no path is found, right? We return nothing, we return no array. Now, okay, here is our BFS function that we talked about, but let's take a look at some of the other functions that we go through. I'm not gonna go too into detail. I will connect this, uh, or I will put the code for this in the description down below. So if you want this project, uh, the link will be the very first on the top of the description. So go check that out. But essentially here, we have a create grid function and we do this in the ready function, right? So we create the grid and then we draw the grid. Now create the grid actually creates the grid using an array. So we simply have an array up here with the grid and that's pretty much it. It's just an array where we can create a grid, the x by y grid, or in other words, a two by two grid, right? Or not a two by two grid, sorry, it's a x by y grid, meaning it's a 2D grid, just like a tile map. Then here we're gonna draw the grid, which is a little easier in a sense. All we're doing is for looping through our current grid that we have, and then we're going to just color uh, by adding the color rectangle. So we're creating this node and then adding it into our array at each position. So we're editing position, we're editing the size to the cell size, which is, I believe, 32. And then we're just uh, changing the colors depending on if it's blocked or empty. All right, now the input is pretty simple. We're just checking if I left or right click. If I right click, I'm going to uh, reset the grid, which is a little helpful for me. Uh, and then if I left click, that's where I will check to see if I can either do a uh, We'll do a handle grid click essentially, and that will actually check to see if I started or ended. So if I click once, the first time I click, we're gonna say, okay, so start cell, we're gonna fill that essentially with the coordinates on my mouse. And then the if I click twice, right, that's the goal cell, that means that's the second uh, uh, click. So that's where we're gonna actually go to. All right, so those are all the kind of setup functions and whatever. Now let's take a look at the other stuff, right? The BFS and whatever. All right, so run BFS. This is essentially just to run this, right? We're gonna get the path, uh, pop it into this function, and that's pretty much it, all right? Now here is where we actually print a few things. We're just gonna say, hey, if the path size, right? The path that we return from this function is greater than zero, that means we found a path, and then we're just gonna highlight that path uh, we're going to go through our grid and make it visually appealing, right? We're going to actually show it to the user, right? In other words, us. Now, if nothing is returned, right, right here, that means no path is found, and we'll just print no path is found. All right, so we've already went over the BFS function. All right, now we have the reconstruct path. Now, this guy is going to take a parent as a dictionary, a start, and a goal, again, with the vector 2i and 2i, right? Now here, we're just gonna set our path to goal here, or sorry, set our path to empty and take our current goal into current. And we're just going to for, uh, while loop through the current, if not start, and append it into the pend or path, and then make current is equal to parent.current. So essentially what's happening is you're going backwards. So think of it as if we started from our uh, tree, what happened is we started from the top and we went down to the bottom until we find our goal 
But now what we're doing is we're just going backwards, right? So we're going, okay, we found number five, right? But we're going to go back up from five. So if I actually you know, bring this up right here, we'll start from five and then we'll go back up to two and then back up to one. All right. Now that's pretty much it. So now we have a uh, array with our numbers, but it's kind of reverse. So what we're going to do is we're going to reverse it. Right? because technically it's in the wrong order, because if we're going backwards, then of course it's going to be in the wrong order, so we're just going to reverse it. And then we have a few other helper functions. Now these ones I will kind of skim through, but this one just gets the neighbors of a current cell, right? so it returns one of these essentially. This is to highlight the path, it's just a simple for loop uh, that will change the colors of the rectangles depending on uh, if it's a start cell, etc. And then here we have get cell coordinates. Uh, this is literally just to take our mouse position and then uh, get our local current coordinates on our uh, screen. Right, now the is valid cell, this is just going to have a few conditions. So we'll return if this, 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 this over here, and this. Okay. And then reset grid, just remove everything and then uh, create it again. So create grid, draw grid. So we just clear everything, uh, reset everything, and then we just create and draw again. Okay, that's pretty much it for this uh, challenge for this week. It was a little beefy and a little long, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you gave it a try because this might be a bit challenging if you haven't done this for a while. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next challenge, uh, hopefully next week, but we'll see. Things are getting a little busy. Uh, next week, I hope to actually upload a devlog of a game I've been working on, so definitely uh, check that out. Uh, either I'll post it in the on this channel or somewhere, so definitely check it out. And then if you are not already subscribed to my email list, uh, that is also down below, uh, probably the second li uh, link or something. Go, get, go check that out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.